Hi guys, I'm Mike. And I'm Stephen. And this is F1 Fanatics. Welcome back to another race day here on F1 Fanatics. And it is the penultimate, last one of our kind of classic race reviews before action and lights out is uh, happening in Austria and we're going to finish off with two Canadian Grand Prix and the first of them today is the 1995 Canadian Grand Prix. Now last week we looked at the uh, 1981 Spanish Grand Prix, I was trying to get the year there but it was 81 Spanish Grand Prix, won by Gilles Villeneuve in the 27 Ferrari, Canadian born driver of course and obviously uh, you know the winner of the 1995 uh, Canadian Grand Prix was Jean Alessi. His sole victory in Formula 1 in that 27 car, a very popular winner with the Canadians. But if you're new around here and you don't know what we do on a classic race review, how we start, we give you the race classification, then we give our top five moments of the race before running down uh, our off-track moment of the week. And we've kind of got two yeah. Uh, this week and then we'll finish off with who is our driver of the day and then we throw it to you guys and uh, listen to what you said on well the classic race view and we'll notice as well obviously we are at point of recording 974 subscribers that's a lot there's a lot there's a lot almost at the 1k almost pushing it across the line. Um, so thank you for all those people who have supported us and given us questions for the Q&A. As soon as we do hit that milestone, bang, the video will drop and uh, we'll kind of, yeah, you'll see our answers to the questions. So everyone who's answered on Twitter, if you want to kind of, uh, it might be too late for the commenting on this video, but thank you for everyone who's gone questions. But enough of that waffle. Let's just jump straight into it. <laughs> there we go. It's got to get classic on it now. So here's the classifications from the 1995 Canadian Grand Prix. So in first position was that Ferrari. His sole victory in Formula 1 is Jean Alessi. Rubens Barrichello and Eddie Irvine were second and third to make it a double podium for the Jordan team. Their best result in F1 to date at that point. Uh, Olivier Panis in the Ligier uh, got P4, a very good result for him. Michael Schumacher finished in P5, and we'll speak about that uh, going in later into the top five moments. Uh, Gianni Morbidelli uh, finished in P6, and Mika Salo in the Tyrrell was in P7. Uh, Luca Badar in the Minardi was P8, and Taki Inui finished in P9. Martin Brundle... Um, and Gerard Berger were classified 10th and 11th respectively, though neither of them finished the race after a collision with each other. But we'll talk about that in further detail uh, going into our top five moments. Now into our retirees, and I will try to just get the names right, but you always know when watching the classic race reviews, there might be a few mispronunciations. But, uh, so our list of retirees start off with Pierluigi Martini, Roberto Moreno, Damon Hill, Mark Blundell, uh, Ukyu Katayama, Bertrand Gachot, Heinz Harold Flintson, Pedro Diniz, uh, Jean Christophe Aboulion, uh, Andre Montamini, David Coulthard, Johnny Herbert, and Mika Hakkinen rounded off the retirees. So you've heard the classification. Now let's kind of go into our top five moments from the race to kind of build a picture. If you haven't watched it, and uh, it's another one we watch on YouTube, so I'll leave the link to the full race in the description down below for you uh, guys to enjoy and watch uh, if you wish to do so, or if you just want to kind of watch a review. Yeah, but starting off, point number five, started off first lap. Uh, going into the hairpin, Mika Hakkinen in his McLaren tried to overtake the Benetton of Johnny Herbert uh, but clipped him, spun him around and poor Johnny Herbert got stuck on the front wing of Mika Hakkinen. Uh, he tried desperately to get out of it, didn't he? Yeah, the, uh, it was a bit of bum 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 bum. Uh... Yeah, but the, both cars stalled at the luck in the end. Ah, uh, it failed. I it think was... Johnny Herbert was stuck on the front wing of Hackenham, and Hackenham was definitely fully gone. 
Yeah, poor move by Mika in this situation. I think he apologised to Johnny Herbert. Yeah, I think they it shook was, hands, I think. Yeah. yeah, noted from it. He just went for a move, didn't make it, and, you know, ruins both their races. Ruins always a strong word. Sure. But essentially, well, it, it is. Yeah, it, ended. <laughs> yeah. it ended both their races. Yeah. Um, but Mika's car stayed on the track for a couple of laps, and it was yeah, quite funny. It was stuck in the hairpin. Yeah, and the yellow flag was going through that sector, but everyone had to be very careful kind of going through the airbin because there was yeah. this small gap. It looked very narrow from the camera shots. Yeah. Over there was just the camera angles, but yeah. It, it wasn't a great place to leave an F1 car. Yeah. Anyway, that's point number five. Oh, and as we saw the Benetton, Johnny Herbert could have had a very strong race. Oh, he could yeah. have done. Yeah. So that was quite big. Yes, on to highlight number four. Now, this is... Uh, the one Ferrari driver did very well. The other Ferrari just wasn't his day. And that was Gerhard Berger. Yes, where do we start? Well, incident one. <laughs> uh, Berger and Alessi were making their way through traffic and uh, they came across Mont Montini in the Minardi. And Alessi made his way past quite easily, uh, but Berger... Less so. Uh, Monti Montini was racing. He was racing someone. I can't remember who was on the dream. No, I can't remember, actually. But, yeah, he, he couldn't Base, give up yeah. position, Kiddy Martini. He was refusing to give any uh, lose any time, basically, because he was racing. And so, uh, for a good few laps, Berger was stuck behind uh, Montini, who actually later... Because was, it was so bad about him holding Berger up, they just got a uh, drive through penalty. Or it was like a five-second penalty. Well, he was like aggressively close yeah. to the door. It wasn't like, oh, they're racing on track. It was like, nope, <laughs> you are not getting past. Okay, so instant two. Yeah, we're on the free here. Uh, he runs out of fuel going down the uh, last straight. So that long straight just runs out of fuel. Just... Nearly, just about, makes it into the uh, garage where they can refuel it. But the Ferrari mechanics had no idea. They didn't rush out to try pushing down the pit lane or anything. I'm not sure if that was allowed or not. But he was basically really just trying to think of the word when you run out of fuel. Crawling. Crawling along. Yeah. And it was a struggle. And it was like, oh. And then... He still managed to stay fighting for the points after that massive delay. He came up behind Martin Brundle, and there was basically uh, a big good duel between them. There were some good moves, some good defending for Martin Brundle. And then Berger, this was his fault this time, makes an ambitious move on the inside of turn... I think it was turn one. Turn one? Yeah, must have been. Well, it's kind of turn one into turn two, isn't it? Turn one kind of eases around the corner and turn two yeah. cuts there. Uh, he goes off onto the grass, trying to make the inside, and uh, he takes out Martin Brando and himself, and then both out the race. Didn't finish, run out of fuel, and got holed up by an a back marker. Great day at the office <laughs> for the most experienced driver on the grid at that point. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Gerhard. That day, it just didn't go right for him. Uh, but moving on to point three, and that is the double podium of the Jordans of Rubens Barrichello coming in P2 and a uh, young Eddie Irvine who would go on to drive for Ferrari. Um, well, actually, it's funny, both drivers would go on yeah. to drive to, for Ferrari and be Michael Schumacher's number two <laughs> driver uh, to John Alessi, who won the race in a Ferrari. Um, but yes, they were both at Jordan at this point, and it was their best result uh, for Jordan as a, as a team, I believe, uh, in Formula 1 at that stage. And they just kind of drove races where they stuck out of trouble. Yeah. Just their cars were reliable, drove solid races, took advantage of all the chaos and retirements around them. Obviously, both Williams retired from the race. Um We'll go on to the head Berger, Brundle. Yeah. Uh, although I think they were both ahead of Berger and Brundle, weren't he? But if Berger didn't run out of fuel. <laughs> Correct, yeah, yeah. Berger, that, that's true. Um, but still, they, they had a very solid and competitive race, and it was it was very impressive to go it. And obviously, you know, the leisure as well uh, 
finishing uh, P4 of Panisse. It was it, it was nice to kind of it is that nice time in the 90s where you know a few more different uh, manufacturers and cars managed to get on the podium. Yeah. Good. Oh, highlight two. Michael Schumacher. Domination. He was absolutely flying around. Also, other, other drivers were floundering around in the pits, running out of fuel, held up by back markers or whatnot. He was just flying. He was dominant. He'd won the championship the year before. He was dominating 1995 uh, on, on track for his second world title at Benetton. And then he gets stuck in third gear about uh, just before the hairpin. And uh, his 30 second gap he built up on the lessee uh, quickly disappeared. Well, I think he had lapped, hadn't he lapped Brundle and uh, Berger who were fighting? Probably. And yeah. we were on an on screen fight with them. And then suddenly you see this yes. blue Benetton just kind of come up in camera and they fly past it. We're yeah. like, sorry, what? <laughs> What's going up? And uh, it was ESPN coverage. Yeah. So I was like, Michael Schumacher! <laughs> Yeah. Oh so yeah, he brought it back to the pits, stuck in third, and they had to do a whole reset of the uh, gearbox el electronics to get it unstuck from gear three. It was quite. You had the laptop on the F one car. You just can't imagine it these days. <laughs> no, <laughs> a whole uh, electronical reset on your car for a pit stop. Uh, it was quite cool to watch, but obviously Schumacher went. For, <laughs> uh, uh, well, in the end, he finished sixth. He like finished fifth, fifth, fifth with yeah. the re obviously of, retirement yeah. of Berger and Brundle. Yeah, <laughs> so um, yeah, Schumacher, very unlucky because he really should have flew uh, to the first position. There. Obviously, Canada is one of his strongholds as well. Yeah. He's very good at the Canadian Grand Prix, and uh, it's one of the rare times that he didn't actually win there in his time within Formula One. But yeah, he's. He'd pretty much been flawless all day and then it was damage limitation because title rifle Damon Hill had retired. So he still managed to get points and extend a lead over him. So uh, I suppose it wasn't the worst day at the office. No. Uh, but certainly could have been a lot more. But we move on to point number one. And, you know, Jean Alessi just drove a flawless race. He wasn't going to catch Michael. The uh, Ferrari wasn't on the par with the Benetton, but obviously he's taken for advantage. He just drove after overtaking uh, Gerard Berger early on, going past a spinning out David Coulthard and um, then overtaking Damon Hill pretty early on. It was then just pretty much his own race where he just kind of put in consistent lap times, consistent uh, you know performance throughout the race. And it was just, yeah, a really solid and great drive from him. But I think it's more the bigger picture of things. Jean Alessi was a really great talent in Formula 1. And he's probably one of those forgotten names within Formula 1. Because this was his first victory. And it would turn out to be his last victory in Formula 1 as well. And I think he had a knack of being in the wrong car at the wrong time. Never really kind of truly having the machinery to match his talent to, you know, be competing consistently at the sharp end with the best of the best in the sport and kind of matching and he he was definitely had the talent that warranted more than his one win in Formula One. So I I think, you know, it was just it was brilliant to watch him claim it and, you know, the celebrations after it was in the day of his thirty first birthday. Hey that's a pretty good birthday gift. Yeah. Yeah. That's one he'll always remember. Absolutely, but it was just, you know, it, it wasn't anything, this race, it was a good race, it's still to watch, but I think it's more makes this list as a classic race in terms of just what it meant in terms of a bigger picture of thing, of one of the great drivers to compete within the sport, um, you know, getting that first, and the first victory is always, you know, quite emotional and quite yeah. a special one. And of course he had the number of jewels, so yeah. big, big Canadian hero. Yeah, so a very a very popular winner in that 27 yeah. Ferrari car, that's for sure. But we move on to the off-track moments. So, the first off-track moment was an honourable mention to this one. Uh, do you want to go with this one, Stephen? Yep, as usual, it's the commentary. 
Uh, American commentary. Uh, I don't know where to start. There were so many bizarre comments, and it's that kind of hype, trying to hype everything up. And then you had the random adverts, and yeah, <laughs> commentary. It was it was bizarre. I think my favourite moment was like you know at the start, and it's like. Uh, we we just don't know when the first round of pit stops are going to start. <laughs> yeah. uh, these F1 teams really keep it secret from us. I was like, well, well yeah, they're not going <laughs> to betray it. And I think Derek Daly, obviously an ex-F1 driver himself, an uh, Irish guy, um, was uh, commentating as well with with them. But, yeah, it was... It, it was just a little bit bizarre, but it, it was a nice kind of fun way and... It, it was the enthusiastic American commentary. Yeah, I just remembered, uh, I think Leslie went a bit screwly at one point. He was like, he's all over the track. And he just went, boom. <laughs> His back end had basically just slid around a bit. Because basically this race started uh, with, they all started on slicks, but there had been rain, so there was a wet part of the track, wasn't yeah. there? So, you know, the grip was a little bit meh at the start of the race. But yeah, it was just like, he's all over the place. <laughs> We're like, well, uh, <laughs> That's, that's not entirely true, is that's it? That's one way to pull it. <laughs> that one perspective. <laughs> For the other off-track, which is kind of on-track moment, um, is Jean Alessi celebration. So on the warm-down lap, his Ferrari runs out of fuel, and Michael Schumacher stops to pick it up. And obviously, you know, first one, we, we've said it means so much, and he's like standing, you know, at the back of Michael Schumacher's car, going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's kind of what a lot of people would do. Yeah. Was, and so one, he, he, he kind of felt like a, a, a fan at that stage. <laughs> just going, I've won! Come on! <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was amazing to see. It, you, you do see some kind of... There's been some iconic moments of people getting lifts on other yeah. people's Formula 1 cars. Not but, quite like this, though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's, that's an iconic moment off track from there. But driver of the day... Will it go to the winner of the race, Jean Alessi? Or will it go to Michael Schumacher? Well, Stephen, I'll throw it to you. Who is your driver of the day? Uh, it's a tough one, but I think the fair thing to do is to give it to Michael Schumacher. Alessi, it meant the win was so meant so much. He did brilliantly on the opening lap and then didn't really put a foot wrong the rest of the race. But he got the win because Schumacher's gearbox failure um, problem. And Schumacher was absolutely dominating it. Like I said, about 33 seconds, I think it was, bit of a lessy when his gearbox went. And yeah. I think deserved driver of the day to him, but yeah. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd agree. Michael Schumacher definitely is the driver of the day on this one. And the 1995 season, I, I think, showed... Uh, you know, Damon Hill was in it still, but it, it was starting to get into that, obviously, that we'll come to see later in Michael's Ferrari years, that he could just absolutely dominate a season and dominate kind of races. And, yeah, this was just... He, he was almost on a different racetrack. Yeah. Yes, the Benetton was a lot better, and people would say the active suspension on the car, so uh, that's... Uh, definitely benefited and helped. He had a very good car and he was more than taking advantage of that fact, but certainly was the driver of the day for this one. But that's it, guys. That's another classic race review. And next week, the final classic race review before we start, we'll be back in Canada for that performance by Jensen Button in the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix. Oh, yeah. It's a hell of a race. And it's a, it's a brilliant one to kind of end on. Back, obviously, into kind of more modern era uh, style of Formula 1. But that, that was just a brilliant race for me. And it's, it's a good one to finish on. But for this race, you've heard our top five moments. You've heard our off-track moments and our driver of the day. But who makes the cut for you? What is your top five moments? Who's your driver of the day? And what are your off-track moments? It's a lot to comment on. Give them a lot to do. I do. I, I'm, I'm asking you a lot. A harsh. You're asking them to do a whole essay in the comments. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Sunday is meant to be rest day, but we're getting to the end now. You guys need to start putting in the work. No more slacking. Is, is that okay? Wait. No? If you're new around here and you you like writing essays and you, you like listening to us giving you essays to write, um, what, what can they do, Stephen? They can like, they can subscribe, and they can ding that bell. Ding that bell. And, and then write their said. essay. And write that essay. Come on, don't forget. Don't forget, you know, uh, we will be marking them each individually. Uh, yeah, giving give them a grade. Give me a grade. That is funny. But yes, uh, thank you again, guys, for everyone subscribing. Obviously, like we said, so close to a 1,000 subscribers. Now, we are really grateful, and yeah, we're looking forward to doing that Q&A and answering some of your guys' questions from the community. It's been, we've got a lot of questions in, so that will be brilliant. But that's it from us today, guys. So for now, UF1 fans, keep racing!